Yo, what's up guys? It's your brother Shaney G. How you all doing? Today we're going to be reacting to Randy Foulface. And just to kick off the week, we're going to start off with some awesome comedy, with some laughs here. I've never actually even watched Randy Feltface before. My brother told me about him like a month or two ago, but I just haven't had time to watch it. One of my channel members, Rana, recommended I check this out. And it's one of her perks. She gets a, a free request for me to react to, so... This is it, guys. This is going to be quite a long one, so let's just jump into it. I'm looking forward to this. I love, I love these some comedy. I used to watch tons of it, but it's been a while, so this is going to be awesome. So it looks like just like a puppet that somebody's operated here, <laughs> and it's going to be writing a novel. I think. Let's just get straight into it. Let's go, guys. Alright, <clears throat> here we go. Okay, fuck. Okay, here we go. Okay. <laughs> Walking the sky. Chapter one. I bought a bookshelf on Gumtree recently. Um, <laughs> I it, love it was an amazing experience. I'll quickly tell you about it. I love Australian um, comedians. They're so freaking funny. I was just trying to check. I could see the pixels a little bit later, but it's okay. Well, we can handle that. And then I'll read the book. But I found it. Sorry, let's go one. back. I bought a bookshelf on Gumtree recently. Um, it, it was an amazing experience. I'll quickly tell you about it and then I'll read the book. But I found it strange because it, it made me start to think about the way, like, our methods of communication have sort of changed over the years. You know, in the old days, if you wanted a bookshelf, you'd just go see Gareth the bookshelf guy because he was the dude in your tribe. Who made <laughs> oh, this is going to be cool, I'm pretty sure. Cave, he was reputable. Now, any mad bastard can sell their shit on Gumtree. You know what I mean? As a species, we're sort of able to cope with knowing and, and gossiping about around like 100 or 150 people. That's like the limit of our tribe. Any yeah, that's what I always say. I say that all the time. I'm not, phones and stuff have pretty much destroyed us because there's too many people in our tribe and there's too much information or too many people to try um wrap your thoughts around so you're trying to worry about somebody that's living up there in america or something and that you can't have any influence on here or um somewhere like in africa that's starving there's not really much influence you can do here then your thoughts and your mind are like worrying about that the whole time and then if you just stick to your little tribe something small like that then you wouldn't worry too much and you can probably handle that like tribe and try to help each other out that's just my thoughts on that can Confusing, which is why we created abstract constructs like territories and deities <sighs> to unite larger groups of people under an imaginary common factor. Yeah, oh, that's what I've always said. I love this really already. On mass on special occasions, but I think like social media and it's fucking all that up. You know, and I think we're we're able to deal with the thousands of people we're connected to on a daily basis. This is that shit I say result, all the time. We neglect our immediate one fifty. You know, that's why I never get invited to parties anymore. It's not because I. <laughs> on about veganism and fisting old ladies <laughs> um, I think I love it Facebook and everybody just assumes you are I am so behind on the births deaths and marriages of my friends that I feel like the time traveler's wife every time I go to a party I'm like this is uh, Tim he's our son he's six now fucking didn't even know you were pregnant <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, and you know smartphones aren't that great. You know that, right? They're not. They're not that great. You don't need the internet in your pocket. You work at Coles, okay? You're not working for the president. <laughs> you don't need it. You don't need that much information. And also, what was the point of developing opposable thumbs for you to take a photo of your head, and post it on the internet, and then just stand by for validation? Oh, no man. one gives a fuck about <laughs> your head. In order to gain permission to post a photo of their own head on the internet and stand by for validation, <laughs> that's just what's happening. Fuck about your head will at some point see it in real life. <laughs> fuck your head and the neck it rode in on. That's funny. Okay, I used to be like when I was younger, I used to take so much selfies that I just came to the realization I was like, how many times can some people see my face? I'm pretty sure it looked the same yesterday. It looks the same today. What am I trying to do? Just get validation, like you're saying. Fuck it with everything, even YouTube. Uh, it sucks that <laughs> we're just trying to be validated by our peers. But that's all our fears. Uh, we are social creatures that want social validation. If we don't get it, we're upset. That's why most of us live in depression and stuff these days. Because we don't get as much likes as our other friends and so forth. We're comparing ourselves. It's the vicious cycle of social media. Or just life in general. Your vanity is sucking up my band 
huge wits. <laughs> anyway, this is what's going through my head as I'm on Gumtree looking for a bookshelf because, oh, you know, when you put something in, on the on the in the, like in the search in book tree in book tree, what the fuck? When you put something in the search on Gumtree, I'm having a stroke up here. Um, yeah, when you put something in the search, right? And and like, there's always a couple of things that come up in the list that are like the polar opposite of what you search for. I'm like, get out of my head, Gumtree algorithms, conspiracy. No, but seriously, you type, you type, it's like bookshelf, and it's like bookshelf, bookshelf. I actually haven't been on. I haven't been on Gumtree in such a long time. I don't even think that exists anymore. In us, well, it does actually, but I don't think much people use it because now you got Facebook Marketplace. Oh, bookshelf gramophone. <laughs> bookshelf, bookshelf, bookshelf combine harvester. What the fuck? <laughs> yeah, that's actually a pretty good price. <laughs> Anyway, on this particular day, I found two bookshelves that worked for me in terms of cost and, more importantly, geographical convenience. Because I'd be fucked if I'm driving to Broadmeadows to pick up a bookshelf, right? So, <laughs> I type in bookshelf and I see the two things and I'm like, okay, one seller is Kathy, the other is Morgan. I send them both the same text message. Hello, I saw your bookshelf on Gumtree. Is it still available? Kathy texts back straight away saying, sorry, it went this morning. <laughs> That's cool, Kathy. I'm sorry I gave you an annoying voice in the retelling of the story. <laughs> Morgan's response came through a couple of minutes later and simply read, It was my wife's bookshelf. <laughs> How do you respond to that? Aside from the fact that it doesn't answer my fucking yeah, question. <laughs> his use of past tense in that sentence unnerved me slightly. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I should probably just find another bookshelf. And then I noticed he lived in the suburb next to me, so I replied, is it still available? <laughs> he responded with the letter Y. Just a Y? Is he asking me why I want to know if it's still available? <laughs> or is it a Y for yes? And he's so in the throes of grief that he can't manage the E and the S. <laughs> I assume it's a Y for yes, so I respond, cool, I'll take it. When's a good time to come and pick it up? No reply for 15 minutes. I'm like, oh, he's forgotten about me. Fuck it, I'll find another bookshelf. And then when his reply actually does come through, I realise he spent those 15 minutes crafting his response because it's a fucking thesis. <laughs> he must have felt so bad about only using a single consonant in his previous text that he just massively <laughs> overcompensated <laughs> with this one. The opposite also, way. for some reason, felt that the use of punctuation... Entirely unnecessary. <laughs> so it's just one obscene. I do that sometimes, I'm not gonna lie. I'm not the best with copying. Only long sentence, which reads, You must come and pick up now. I only have short time here at house and also it wide. So bring van or trailer and their stair, but I can help you carry downstairs. If you can't park out front, walk up past ring bell, and I will help you carry it to trailer or van. I only accept cash, and if you do not come now, I will sell it someone else <laughs> just so funny. again i'm thinking oh i should just find another bookshelf at this point but now i am fascinated by morgan and i simply must meet the man so i drive over to his house oh before i left i sent him a message saying cool i'll be there in 10 minutes he replied okay but spelt it okay a y which just fascinated me more that he'll use four letters to spell a two-letter word and only one letter to spell a three-letter word morgan is off the fucking chain <laughs> i love this deep energy over to his house I'm trying to picture what he's going to be like you know his pigeon English might suggest ethnicity of some sort but I don't want to racially profile him maybe he's an old man who recently lost his wife and he's not that very good at texting or maybe and I'm really hoping this is the case Morgan is just batshit crazy so <laughs> I get to his house and I go up to the, I park out front, walk up the path, ring bell, and I, <laughs> I brace myself for the door to I'm always so scared when I do things like this. I'm just like, oh man, I hope these people aren't like setting me up for some robbery or something like that. But hey, 10 out of 10 times, well, I haven't had one of those yet. So 100% success rates or buying something or flying so far.
to be opened by like an old man in a smoking jacket wearing fishnet stockings and suspenders just puffing on an opium pipe while a butler just creepily polishes a goldfish in the background and then a tiny pug dog wearing a fez hat just trots up the hallway and sits on the mat looks up at me and says welcome to our lovely room <laughs> Imagine. And then the door opens and I am thoroughly disappointed. Before me stands an average Caucasian male in his mid-thirties, dressed casually, hipster chic, stubble, glasses with designer frames, expensive watch. I immediately think architect, but the house is too cheesy for that. It's like a double-storey doll's house with bay windows. But definitely a designer of some kind, maybe a graphic designer. He's too skinny for manual labour. He's too hip for the public sector. But this can't be Morgan. Because Morgan's text messages would suggest that he's not that technically savvy. And then the man standing in front hey. of me says, Hello, my name's Morgan. And the plot thickens! <laughs> Just because you can't text doesn't mean that you're not tech savvy. <laughs> he invites me in, shakes my hand, closes the door, and 20 minutes later, I will be witnessing Morgan perform some of the most aggressive acts of violence I've ever seen in my life. And I will be speeding away in my car, bleeding from the face. Here's how this shit went down. <laughs> I go into the house and I notice two things immediately. One, this is a house in the throes of renovation. Nothing too extreme, but there's like drop sheets on all the furniture, there's freshly painted walls, there's a bathtub wrapped in plastic in the hallway awaiting installation. Someone's doing some work on this house. The second thing I notice, on the way up the stairs to the second floor, on the first floor landing, is a wedding photograph featuring a very cleanly shaven Morgan with a very beautiful bride very much in love the photograph is very much on the floor and the glass in the frame is very much smashed she's not dead she's left him and the plot thickens a bit more for Morgan dun, dun, dun. <laughs> and as Morgan unceremoniously like kicks the photo frame to one side on the way up the stairs I really wanted to pry into <laughs> Morgan's life and ask heaps of inappropriate questions <laughs> But he was clearly a broken man. He had this terrible air of sadness around him, so I didn't want to intrude. Luckily for me, though, I didn't have to, because Morgan immediately began oversharing <laughs> and told yeah. me the whole fucking story. Ah, <laughs> thank you, Morgan! I shall <laughs> you your wish. every word and then retell your tale to 200 strangers and record it for a fucking DVD. <laughs> <laughs> If it really happened, uh, he probably is not. a graphic designer, yes, and he's really good at it. He does like massive rebranding campaigns for large corporations. He gets flown all over the world doing this shit, right? <laughs> About four years ago, a woman hired Morgan to rebrand her florist business, and he did such a great job, she married him. <laughs> and he thought everything was just fine, until about three months ago, Morgan had to do a presentation in Sydney, right? But he was on his way home from overseas and he got stuck in Dubai due to a flight cancellation. So rather than cancel the meeting, Morgan suggested to these businessmen in Sydney that they do a Skype chat because he's so technologically savvy despite his fucking baffling text message style. <laughs> so Morgan checks into a hotel, cracks open his laptop and starts Skyping with this room full of businessmen in Sydney who are all watching Morgan on a massive screen on their boardroom wall, right? And everything's going great. Morgan is totally nailing it until about halfway through he realises that a file he wants to show these dudes is on the desktop of his home computer back in oh his no. home office in Melbourne <laughs> What's gonna and happen? he decides to live share the desktop of his home computer on the Skype chat. Oh, we know he knows this how is going. to do that. He can control his computer remotely from anywhere in the world. It's not particularly new technology, but Morgan makes it sound so impressive. So this room full of businessmen are all watching keenly like, oh, Margaret bringing some biscuits. There's some newfangled shit going on in here. <laughs> As Morgan clicks a few buttons and brings up the desktop of his home computer on the Skype chat. Now, what I Morgan Skype in ages. Realize is that his wife has been using the photo booth app on that particular computer to take pictures of herself. 
to take naked pictures of herself. To take naked pictures of herself doing some pretty fucked up shit. <laughs> it's embarrassing to say the least. Just as Margaret came back in with the biscuits, I've got you the <laughs> <laughs> familiar with the photo booth app will know that how it works is it accesses the built-in camera in your computer and with a click of a button takes a photo of you when you're standing in front of the screen and if you know that you'll also know that if you leave that application open the camera also stays open witnessing whatever may be happening in front of the computer in real time such as your wife in your home office fucking your best mate That's why you don't have friends. Morgan then goes on to tell me she's keeping the house, his former best mate is moving in, and while they're out for the day happily shopping for fittings, Morgan must suffer the indignity of moving his shit out and selling the stuff they don't want on Gumtree to this guy. Oh, <laughs> oh. that. It's at this point of the story that Morgan starts crying. He breaks down and I do not blame the man. It's fucking horrible. And I just want to give him a big hug and say, everything's going to be all right, Morgan. But I am holding the full weight of a bookshelf halfway down a set of stairs. And Morgan is the only thing stopping that bookshelf from caving my face in. I was like, Morgan! <laughs> And Morgan managed to pull himself together for about eight seconds and then just went bah, and let the bookshelf go. I fell backwards. It literally rolled over me and took out the light hanging above the staircase. I'm now lying on my back getting showered in broken glass as the bookshelf oh, no. turned end over end and just went thunk right through a freshly painted wall at the bottom of the stairs. I'm like, oh. <laughs> I know you don't need the bookshelf anymore. It's probably broken, but... I forget that this dude's even a puppet sometimes. This guy's so good at like um, doing all the moves and everything. It's amazing. <laughs> I've got a tiny cut on my forehead, which is just piercing blood for some reason. Apart from that, I'm fine. <laughs> Morgan, however, he's not fine. <laughs> Not mentally, that guy's broken. <laughs> Something Poor happened Morgan. when the bookshelf lodged itself in the wall, and his sadness just went away in a second, and he started pissing himself laughing. <laughs> Hysterical. And he had the creepiest laugh I've ever heard in my life. Something broke inside of Morgan's mind right there. I'm standing going, this is weird, and he's going... <laughs> Like some sort of demonically possessed baritone kookaburra. Is that me? Can I still have the bookshelf? He's like, yeah. We extracted from the wall the bookshelf, incidentally, showing no sign of having just rolled down a staircase oh, okay. and through a wall. We carry it out to my car. We had to stop about six times because Morgan was like, hang on a minute. <laughs> We got it to my car, put it on the trailer, and Morgan was in such a great mood, he let me have the bookshelf for free. Oh! When? Have you got an epic story to tell everyone? <laughs> Let's get it. <laughs> and that's where the story should end. <laughs> Dun, dun, dun. But there was something about the bookshelf going through the wall that flipped a fucking switch in Morgan's head and he is now hungry for more destruction. So as I started tying the, the bookshelf down to my trailer, Morgan just strolls over to like an upright mailbox on the front lawn and just starts trying to wrench it out of the <laughs> really putting his back into it. Like, mm -hmm. I'm like, uh, He wields it like a fucking battle axe and just starts smashing up the front garden, just beheading the daisies, fucking up the lavender. <laughs> I'm like, oh, hey, Morgan, I love hey, you want to stop and think <laughs> about that. And he wheeled around and looked at me like Jack Nicholson chasing Shelley Duval up the stairs in the shine <laughs> and said, Why don't you mind your own fucking business? <laughs> yep, 
Yep, cool man. Yep, yep. Let's get out of there. Now, I like tying knots. I'm quite good at tying knots. If I tie something down, I take my time because I want it to stay there. But as Morgan nonchalantly strolled up the driveway, rolled up the garage door. Ah, I just rolled over my tape. Injury watching a comedy show, Nas. And put the mailbox through the windscreen of an Audi? <laughs> I must admit, I kind of rushed my knot tying job. <laughs> yeah, get out I of bed. I'm in the car, I'm about to drive off. I'm like looking at the house going, oh, oh, I'm sure it'll be fine. And then an armchair smashed out of an upstairs window and just went doink, 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 doink down the front lawn. I was like, <laughs> what's my duty of care in this situation? <laughs> I'll be out of there to I be mean, honest. I, I don't know. Jeez. I didn't want him to trash the house. I'm like, God, fuck it. Yeah, what do you do actually? Nothing. What did you guys do so in the comments below? I walked up the driveway shitting myself. You know when someone does something really violent and you're just like, duh. Fuck, we're not supposed to do shit like that. <laughs> yucky, just yucky feeling in my tum tum. And I'm standing there, standing there in the garage, and there's like an adjoining door in the garage that leads into the house. I can see in through the, through the door into the house, up the staircase. It's like a wooden staircase, and I'm standing in the garage just going, oh, fuck. <laughs> Morgan! <laughs> Like I was calling a cat for its dinner. Like, <laughs> muggy, 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 muggy. <laughs> and then I notice a small trickle of water start to come from the top step. And then a little bit more water and then, so, and then quite a lot of water. Just oh, piercing no, down no, the geez. stairs like a shitty water feature. I'm like, ah, oh, that can't be right. And then Morgan appeared on the top step holding a hammer like this. Bah! I was like, whoa! He's like, bah! Starts running at me, wielding the hammer, going, Bleh. I'm like, oh, no, man, I just wanted to buy your bookshelf. He's like, run straight past me. I'm like, where are you going? He's like, Bleh. made a beeline for my car. I'm like, no, man, stop. He's like, stop it, just stop. He spins around and goes, I just checked my phone. She texted me 15 minutes ago saying she'll be here in 15 minutes. We gotta go, and gets into my car. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're part of this. I run down the lawn, get in the driver's seat. I'm like, what was with the water? He goes, oh, I put plugs in all of the sinks and turned all the taps on. I'm like, oh, that's fucked. He's like, just drive. I was like, ah. I took off so quick, rounded the corner at the end of his street, and the bookshelf just went, boosh, and exploded against the guardrail. Just exploded in a shower of badly tied knots and broken dreams. <laughs> so me and Morgan just fucking left it there. Like a little breadcrumb for his ex-wife to find <laughs> on the way home to her destroyed gingerbread house. I dropped Morgan at a train station. I have never seen him again. <laughs> and that, my friends, is why I no longer shop on Gumtree. Yes, <laughs> yeah, so it just went from one thing to another thing. That was awesome. Uh, so it's like you're reading a story or something. I guess that was the story. Oh, <laughs> uh, fuck. <laughs> you know my favorite bit of that story? I just made it up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's not true. There is no Morgan. Oh! It's very unsatisfying, isn't it? But I saw him in my head. <laughs> yeah, you made all these I pictures and stuff. <laughs> you just made him up, or we all Why made him up when he told so the story. Wrong? When someone tells us a story we just heard isn't true, and yet so satisfied at the end of a fictional novel. Huh? No, no, no. <laughs> you know the other great thing about that story? First draft. Fuck you, Hemingway! <laughs> that's not, that's so good, yeah, this dude. Randy. Randy Funkface, guys. Yeah, I want to watch some more. My brother told me I should watch it a while ago, but that was freaking awesome. <laughs> I love that such like, so I'm saying, is it actually real stories? And at the end, at least he said it wasn't real. <laughs> oh, there's so much cool Randy Funkface. Well, up to you guys if you enjoyed the reaction and stuff please share it or like the video so that youtube algorithm can push it out there if you guys want to become members i'll leave links in the description below then you guys can also request a song 
or just to help the channel out and also paypal if you guys want to donate to help the channel out but yeah that was so much fun well i'm gonna end the video now because it's getting a bit long <laughs> that video was 21 minutes and 12 seconds long i always love checking out numbers like that a palindrome it's like backwards much love peace and happiness and you'll see you guys on the next one